mission, be a fool to ignore. They try to shoot me down, cause they knew I was sore. I'm tired of taking losses, I ain't losing no more. You gotta see the vision, a man on a mission. I'm a Welcome back to Let's Talk on the Low Man. It's my first episode, I'm here with my two great guys that I admire, man. It's been a big inspiration to me. Um, I want to introduce yourself, but uh, my bro right here, Demarcus, my right, my right hand man. Keep me out of everything, dog. Keep me grounded. You know, when everything going wrong, you know that's that's what I'm calling. And my guy right here, man, can't leave me, man. The, the man in the aisle with my special guest for the day. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in, man. Um, before I would do it, one thing I'm gonna do on all my podcasts is, man, I'm gonna do like a mental and physical check-in. I think. We as men, we don't sit down and talk about that enough about, you know, how mentally, physically we're doing it. So I'll go first. Um, mentally, I feel like I'm about a six and a half, seven. Um, physical, I'm about, i say a four. I'm out of shit, man. Yeah. I'm trying to get my body ready. Right? So, uh, get ready for the season. But, uh, but uh, nah, my body's good. Um, just a matter of just getting myself back together, um, getting ready for the season, and just kind of knocking the rust out and getting myself back with uh, so for me, man, mentally, uh, I say I say like seven, eight ish. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, newness, newness in my life right now, man. And uh, you know, just making those adjustments can sometimes be difficult going through those periods of transition. So, uh, but you know, keeping strong, man, keeping steady. So like I said, about seven and a half, eight. Physically, man, I'm getting back to it, man. I hit yeah. the treadmill this yeah. morning. Yeah, I like you it. know what I'm saying? Before work, I hit the treadmill this morning. Yeah. So, you know, getting back to it, man. You know, carving that time up for myself. So, I, I say, uh, I'll sell. I'll sell myself. What's up, man? What's up? Uh, for me, I think I'm about at a seven-ish, I would say. And I, I'm going to say that because recently, I know you know, but I've uh, been in a car wreck, and you know, you know how you go through something, and something challenge you mentally, or, and recently, you know, I told my vehicle, and stuff like that, so I think now I got, just got a little PTSD. Mm, mm, but, shake back. Yeah, mm. but other than that, um, it's been good for the most part, definitely challenging, but um, right now, I'm actually on a spiritual journey. So now I'm just trying to learn about myself, changing my indoctrination, you know, Facts. everything I learned. Like, Facts. Trying to almost take everything I know and what was taught, throwing it out the window. Yeah, I'm learning, relearning. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Right, man. Oh, hold on, bro. Physical, bro. You, you can't just oh. speak <laughs> that. <laughs> you can't speak right, that. Cool. that so, uh, physically, I'm great. And honestly, I'm really great because I have been doing the work. <laughs> so right now, like, you know, after uh, my surgery and stuff, I feel fine. Like, I feel like I don't know if it's shape wise. Right. But just how you feel. Still, yeah, you I feel, feel great. Good. I'm at a 10. Y'all been drinking your water, huh? Most definitely. All right, bet. Most definitely. That water check, serious. Yeah, most definitely. So, man, how y'all been, man? I, I ain't did a podcast since. <laughs> Um, this is my first one shooting, actually shooting video where you can actually see, but me actually doing a podcast. I haven't done an actual podcast since like maybe like a month and a half and like just a lot to change. You yeah. know? Last time I did a podcast, I was in San Antonio and so I'm in Louisiana and so just want how the holidays was for y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's talk about that first before we kind of dive into anything. All right, so hey man, first holiday as a father, you feel me? Yeah, first holiday as a father. Yeah. Uh, so it was fire, man. You know, I ain't getting nothing, really. You know, but it's all good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, it was fire. You know, just my kids was, uh, they had just turned six months uh, on Christmas Eve. So it was just cool. You know, they started to learn how to use their hands and stuff. So they rip open their little gift. Uh, and just being around family, I I'm always a person. I'm not into, you know, material stuff or whatever. I just like to vibe out with the fam. So um, that was great for me, bro. And then... You know, going into the new year, understanding the assignment that I have, you know, the mission is bigger. The right. mission is much bigger now. Now that I'm seeing my kid go from like little babies to actual people who know how to do stuff, right. like, it's a little bit more sense of urgency. It's a little bit more sense of urgency going out of reflecting in 2021 
and realizing what needs to be done in 2022 to, uh, you know, just give them the life that they deserve. Right. Um, and just gratitude, man. That's that's kind of like my theme coming out of 2021 into 22, just gratitude and uh, showing love and gratitude to everybody around me. You feel me? So yeah. that's what I'm on, man. Holidays are great. You feel me? Uh, for me, mine was great too, bro. Because right. um, now, actually, my mom actually works in New York. Mm. So, you know, normally I'm home alone, you know, so, you, you know, I'm a mountain boy, so Real of course talk. I'm a visitor, Real you know, talk. so she finally came back home and it was awesome. Yeah. It was amazing just to spend another holiday with her, really blessed. Right, right. What's good? So, you, you kind of talk about that uh, fatherhood, man, I want to, just before we kind of get into it, for me, I've been telling him, um, like, since my dad passed away, I had been wanting a kid. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you, you are actually a father of twins. And so, man, just kind of talk about what's, what's that lifestyle like, man. Hey, so. Adjustments, bro. Right. Like, mad adjustments. Like, yo, you you expecting a couple four, but eight in the box. Right. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what's happening? Uh, so, yeah, bro, you know, it, it kind of it is one of those things where it's like you really have to in order to be a good father, bro, like all your selfishness has to go out of the window. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's, it's, I'm not gonna say it's difficult for me, but in a sense it is, because I'm a visionary and I'm a dream chaser. And I'm one of those people who I'm always on go for the vision, right. for my purpose. And you know now that vision and that purpose has been adjusted as it has to be simply right. because like it's not about me no more, bro. it's mm-hmm. about my family. So. Uh, it's one of those things, bro, like, it forces you to grow up um, faster. It forces you to, like, really sit back and say, okay, you know what? I got to make adjustments, and the things that I used to do, I can't do it like I was doing it no more. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's, it's been interesting, bro. It's seven months now as of today. It's seven months, and uh, it's the most beautiful thing in the world, bro. Right. Having, having, a, having two... Little babies, bro. Who look at you? I got twins, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's funny because like a couple of my partners, it's, it's crazy that we had like kids at the same time, but like all of them got one baby. You know what I'm saying? So they be calling me, they're like, "Oh yeah, she sleep or so and so." I'm like, "Yeah, bro. One just went to sleep and the other one just woke up. So yeah. I'll call you back. You call me for the talk." But yeah, man, it's a it's a blessing, bro. It's um the biggest blessing ever to me. You feel me? Outside of all the um, all the accolades and stuff, and I even said on my album, bro, you know, your daddy love you so much, he might sacrifice his turn, you know what I'm saying? I don't even really, I don't have the same goals that I had before they were here. Everything has shifted, but in a good way, you know? Right. So, it's awesome, bro. I just wanna uh, really commend you, like, cause to me, um, well, you know where we from, there's not too many households with father figures. Right. Even though you're new to it, but to me, you seem very genuine about it, and I like that. But I got one question for you. I really want to know, um, I haven't got there yet, mm-hmm. and you know, you know, you get a pain from here and there, right. you know, I just want to hear yours. Is it a lot of pressure? Like, is the relationship different when you have a kid and when you don't? Yeah, bro. Yeah, hey, I'm going to keep the buck. It's, it's, like, it's for better or worse? Uh, it depends. It depends on how willing... You are to, uh, you know, to work with that person, bro, because everything changes, you know, um, in terms of, like, with my girl, man, and she's amazing, bro. Um, it's been, it's been, like, a roller coaster, but not in, like, as far in terms of our relationship or and, and wondering if we want to be together or not, but just in terms of adjusting. Like, I'm a first-time father, she's a first-time mother, and we got twins, bro, like, I don't, I don't think everybody understands how much having two at the same time mm-hmm. magnifies it, bro, because you never have time to yourself. You, you never free. And then it's hard to find babysitters for twins, bro. It's hard to, bro, hard to go on date night, bro, because babysitting twins is hard. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it definitely has challenged our relationship upon being fully transparent. Um, but I feel like, uh, and we had a conversation the other day, bro, uh, you know, we in the time of transition because when you're together with just that one person and it's just you and her 
y'all are able to give all y'all time to each other. Y'all are able to just pick up and go on a trip whenever y'all want to, you know. And now that it's not like that no more, it's a uh, it's a lot of communication involved, bro. It, and that's another thing, bro. It forces you to grow up and go from trying to be the man to being a man. You know what I'm saying? So, and I actually that's another thing, bro. My elbow's full of gems, bro. Like, you know. Uh, <laughs> So that's why I've been transitioning from, you know, trying to be K. Levy, the, the hip hop, the hip hop guy, you know, Mr. Legendary, being the man to, all right, you gotta focus more on being Kelly Levy, the man, for your family, and being a leader, and being someone who my children grow up and want to follow, you know. So, um, from a relationship perspective, bro, it's um, it's something that you gotta be ready for, for real. Like, People be hollering. I, now I, I see it so much clearer now, bro, because you know, people be tweeting or whatever. Yeah, man, I'm trying to get a baby. Boy, you better be ready, dog. <laughs> hey, hey. Be ready, bro, for real. This is going change everything. My, my thing was, it's like, people always tell me, you know, be ready for whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, do you ever feel like you're ready for anything? You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's always my, my response to them because yeah. it's like, for me personally, like, my whole life, like especially the last couple of years, yeah. being able to adjust right then and there. Quickly, you know what I'm yeah. saying? To adjust right then and there. And so for me, it's almost like I wanted that because of I created that love for my parents and all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a parent. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was my whole reason for saying that that I want a kid. Now, I mean, I'm at a point in my life now, like I'm, I'm 23. Yeah. Um, I, it's complicated. <laughs> 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 hey, but you know what I'm saying. So, but, uh, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a, I want to say I'm in a good space. But mm -hmm. um, I recently telling, um, I recently talking to somebody about, you know, uh, I understand what it's like for uh, a woman when they say like they, they crave that love from a man. Mm -hmm. And so, like for me, when I lost my mom, it was like, you know, I appreciate the woman in my life. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Just because, like, like one thing I realized, like, mommy and no never stop. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Even, even now, it's so like I'm paying attention to like my sisters. Mm -hmm. Like my, my niece called my sister name all day, and I'm yeah. like I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm like, man, being a mom is 24 yeah, seven. Really. So like, you never come out of that mommy mode. No. Like, yeah. and, and so for me, you know, I understood, and he had a personal relationship with mom too, and just kind of understanding who she was and, mm -hmm. and, and what it is, what she stood for. And so, you know, um, I just want to get a round of applause out to the woman now. Like, yeah, real talk, hey, man. Man. Hey, real talk. Man, I appreciate it, and. Um, just to change gears a little bit, you know, I want to talk about your album, man, you know, right. um, I, I listened to it, uh, especially a couple times, just, I've been back and forth from San Antonio, um, mm -hmm. since you released it, um, so for you, you know, me and you talked and you said it was the most vulnerable you've ever been Thanks. since, um, since in, in any one of your albums, mm -hmm. and so, um, just, just talk about, you know, what, what was that like taking that transition and being able to open up and let people see a side of you? Because for me, I've learned that people grow more or pay attention more to people's struggles than yeah. actual success. Absolutely. Just because people relate to that more right than, than X, because everybody don't get to that level of inner peace or yeah. self, self discipline or whatever, whatever it is that, that we've accomplished. Nice. And so, like, people are able to relate to the hardships and stuff more than. Um, the thing that we've actually been able to, to accomplish. So just just talk about what it goes like. Yeah, man. So so DBSB uh, is double vision seeing double, right? Um, this was my opportunity as an artist to speak to some of the things that I guess hasn't been spoken by me. To be quite frank, you know what I'm saying? Be quite honest about it. Look, let's keep it a buck. I uh, a lot of people who know me or know of me or have been knowing me for a while, you know, they look at K. Levy as, uh, oh man, that's the positive dude, right? Like, uh, that's the spiritual guy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and for a while, I caught a lot of heat for that, you know what I'm saying? Especially growing up, because, you know, we from the South, bro, we want to that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's cool, like, it's a time and place for everything, you know, I came up on Wayne and Boosie, you feel me? Like, that's that was my thing. But, I felt like I had moved too far to one side where people where I'm from felt like they couldn't relate to me no more. Right. But I'm still here. Like I'm still in Bashy, right? right? So double vision seeing double was an opportunity for me to say, okay, look, I'm about to tell you the stories about the other side, right? Where the grass ain't greener. 
tell you the stories about the people from my hood who see things in a different way. I thought it was important for me to do that because, listen, I got a lot of fans who have never seen that side. And they're not willing to, to accept that kind of commentary from most rappers. Mm -hmm. But they're willing to accept that type of commentary from me because they've seen me out and about, you know, just doing my thing well spoken, cleaned up or whatever. Like, oh, that's KD, but we, we trust them. Mm -hmm. So it's important for me to make songs like Project or The Other Side or Why Am I Losing? Songs that tell stories, you know, hood stories, bro. Right? Right. Like, it's, it's kind of like hood poetry in a sense. Right. Um, so that's that portion of the album. But then there's other portions of the album, um, songs like So Hypocritical, that tells the story of Kaylee Eagle, right? Like, mm -hmm. I've been um, labeled as uh, this guy who seems as if or, or thinks as if he's oh, he's perfect since he don't curse in his rap. So, you know, he don't be on the scene, so on and so far. And uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. So it was important for me to, um, you know, just kind of tell those stories about uh, the things that I've been going through, and I thought it was a perfect time, especially since, look, I spent a lot of time in schools and in churches, and people labeled me as something that I never said I was. So when I popped out, watch this, when I popped up with two kids, unmarried, people were like, whoa, wait, wait a minute, I thought this dude was, you know what I'm saying? And, but, and that is the thing, though, that don't take away from that, you know what I'm saying? And I'd never sit here and say, my children was a mistake. People tried to throw it, oh yeah, man, you just made a mistake. Okay, yeah, I, I, I waver, but my children are not a mistake. Bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was a decision, a conscious decision that was made. I wavered, and look, it is what it is. God dealt with me. I ain't got to talk to nobody about my decision. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. So that's why I say in the intro, I married and became a daddy. Let's address it. My biggest vice for several years gave me my biggest blessing. Double blessings at that, that. Look at what I got into. Regardless of my problems, I'm never regretting them too. You know what I'm saying? So the vulnerability in this album has given me the peace to go forth with my career, not looking over my shoulder wondering, oh, who will see me? Who will hear me? Like, nah, bro, this is me. You feel me? So take everything that you know about K. Levy and keep it, but understand that K. Levy is not that kid from high school anymore who you discovered when he was 16. I'm 26 and now I got two kids. I've seen so much more, you know what I mean? I've traveled, the, I've traveled around the country performing, winning awards, like doing all this stuff, man. And um, it, it was important for me to, to just kind of get that get that part off my back. Like, yo, I'm not scared to be me no more. You feel what I'm saying? So that's kind of what DBSD represented for me, man. Seeing both sides, seeing both perspectives, and um, telling the stories um, that my partners at home needed to hear, you feel me? But look, um, just to, I told him this quote, just tell me what you think about this quote. Um, mm -hmm. I actually posted it on my, uh, my snap a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he, he, he brought it to my attention. I think Kevin Hart said, uh, one of the hardest things to do is to know that you're trying mentally the hardest, but yeah. still don't see no change. You know what I'm saying? So I just want y'all to y'all your opinions about like have y'all ever been there or yeah. like for me personally, I'm experiencing it now. And like um one of the things that I found so peaceful on my podcast, it, it found it gave me a chance for me to be vulnerable and like mm -hmm. let people see because like people see all the success on the field and everything that came with playing football, but they don't know the struggle it is to lose weight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They don't right. know the struggle it is to 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 be talked about and have to be vulnerable days when, you know what I'm saying, I'm down and I'm out about everything that's going on around me. They don't know what it's like for, you know, your friends to be pulling you in one direction and you trying to go in another direction, yeah. but still at the same time, you gotta find that balance of what it's like to, you know what I'm saying, still be there, but also have enough, cop, enough courage to be able to separate yourself to, to one better for you. So, yeah. I'm gonna say it again. The hardest thing to do is to know mentally that you're trying, but still don't see no change. The, the thing is with that, I have to, the key word you said was vulnerability. Right. And you know, we always, me and him always, always talk about, you know, that started as a kid. Yeah. You know, like you got twin. I'm not saying you would do this, but you know, naturally growing up, the boy I followed the bike, oh, come on, get up, you know, right, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know? Yeah. And then you know the girl, you run into it, yeah. you know, honey, you know, like, yeah. 
good. And I feel like that's, it's hard for a man to be vulnerable, you know, because, you know, we always talk, men don't cry. Right, man up. All those things mm -hmm. in that nature. So it's tough. I mean, that's a hard quote because it's like, it's so real, you know, yeah. like, like mentally you're in your head, you know, some, sometimes you can't even sleep. Cause yeah. you're like, I want to do this, I want to do that, but how do this, how do that? Why didn't I happen? Why didn't I happen? You know, and it's just yeah. like, but every day you wake up, this steady going and going. You know? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Man. Yeah, man, I I agree. When you say I'm going through it right now, man, I feel like I, I feel like a literal machine right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like a man moving at times with no emotion because I know what I want to yeah. accomplish. I know what I, I want to do, like for my family. And I'm doing all of it, bro. Mm -hmm. so I'm up. Like, no exaggeration for the camera. No, you know, I, I probably, I'm up 20 hours a day. You know what I'm saying? By no means am I trying to act like that's okay or that it's healthy. But that's just what it is right now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm up 20 hours a day. And trying to do everything that I need to do to advance not only myself, but put myself in a position uh, to advance my family. And... Sometimes I do feel like that, bro. Why am I losing? You know what I'm saying? I ask myself, why? Why am I not moving forward, pushing forward? And I have those sleepless nights because I know I want to do so many things. Um, so with that being said, I, I feel like just to, just to kind of come to a resolution with that, I feel like for me at least, and y'all could kind of weigh in on this as well, I get to the end of each day feeling empty, and I ask myself, well, first and, foremost, first and foremost, I say to myself, I can't keep doing this to myself right. mentally because right. it's not healthy, right. right? And then I ask myself, what can I do to change it? So for me, I know my thing is, obviously, you know, my faith is heavy. But at the same time, I got to meet God halfway. Mm -hmm. So we can't ask God to do this and do that and do that and then... We're, we're met with like a criteria and then we don't hold up our end of the bargain. Right. So I'm working 20 hours a day, doing things 20 hours a day. And I was like, yo, God, like, yo, I got it, bro. You overcompensating first of You killing yourself, basically. Right. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm, I'm finally starting to reach a point where I can see that. Um, and like you said, bro, with everything, with football and, and people not understanding Lowell Narcy's the person, right. I, I guess my question back to you is, what are you doing in terms of your mental to kind of break away from that quote that Kevin Hart said? Right. So for me, man, a lot of people don't know this, dog, but I told it to him, man. I was ready to walk away from football like two months ago. Yeah. Bro. Like, just be done with it. Why so? And it, it wasn't like, a lot of people don't understand of like, so for me, after my mom died, mm -hmm. I felt like I had no why. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, when I'm out there at five in the morning and it's cold and Coach fussing and you know what I'm saying? I got three periods left, but I know I'm tired, my yeah. back tight. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's the first people come to mind. Like, oh like my mom, my mm -hmm. sister, my nieces, like yeah. they they drive me to keep going. And so like when she left, it was almost like like why well, I'm still wow, doing yeah. this, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I kept doing it and kept fighting through all these injuries and going through a lot of things that people still don't know about because like I wanted to give her the lifestyle she gave me. That she you know what I'm saying? That, that, yeah. that she deserved. And so mm -hmm. I know she sacrificed sacrificed a life for me me to be in that situation, man. Yeah. And just from like, I have people now like still that I meet today like that. My mom was telling them to pray for me and yeah. just kind of building relationships and um, going through her Facebook and seeing how much she, she networked me and, yeah, nah, you know, put, you, and, and I'm not even on Facebook yeah, and so you, I'm seeing bro. all the things now and one of the things I, I had seen, a quote that I had read to my therapist was like, you know, love is one thing that we never get, get enough of and we never get, uh, we never give enough of. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you always feel like you never have enough time with, yeah. with whoever, uh, you know, whether she would have lived to see 105 or yeah. whether she would have died when I was born. And so, um, like I told him, I feel like she gave me everything I need for me yeah. to survive in life. Yeah, you know you what I'm saying? Quick, you know? you and so, but to answer your question, um, for me, it's almost like I got to find what works for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, not what helps everybody else. Right. Or not, not what's in tune and what's best for everybody around me. But yeah. what, what works for the well? And I was just telling him, man, just getting back on my, my daily routine, my schedule, man, yeah. because a lot of people like I don't don't realize like <clears throat> I just took a trip to New York mm -hmm. 
And um, like for me, it was good for me because it's like when I got there, she just kind of gave me everything. Like we doing this, 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 and that. And I'm like, I bet. That's good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's 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 what I'm used to. But like put somebody, I would say somebody putting like having a schedule and being able to follow it. And mm -hmm. so like right now, I'm just kind of getting comfortable and figuring out my school schedule and yeah. my workout routines and my yoga schedule and being able to find time to still right. do the thing that. That's how it keeps you, it keeps you busy. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? But I just had a talk with uh, one of my good friends. And so for a while, I stayed with him for about two months mm -hmm. after my mom died. And a lot of people don't know is I stayed there because I wasn't ready to deal with the reality of living oh. at, at her house. Yeah. And so like now like I'm sleeping in her room and living, sleeping in her yeah. bed that she died in, bro. Right, that's cool. And so um, like I knew... At that time, I wasn't ready to take on, you know, just, yeah, just being yeah. ready to accept that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And so it took it took me some time, and like I wasn't gonna do it before I knew I was ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we can get on here and talk about it, but like I'm like, you know, tonight I gotta go home and then you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I gotta be okay with that. Yeah. I can't just come on here and talk and about say, it yeah. and and not be ready for that. And so, like I said, man, uh, for me, it's all about finding out what works for me, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, I, I got a big heart and I always want to help everybody around me, but you know what I'm saying? And, and the situation that I'm in now and the, the, the hand that I've been dealt, yeah. I got to do the best of the world, man. That's facts. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody might not agree with it, everybody might not like it, but you know, maybe on, later on down the line they'll understand, they understand that, yeah. that, that, would, that what it took for me to get to that. And, and if not, and if they don't understand, bro, it just wasn't meant for them to be around, man. You know what I mean? As much as we love people, you know, as much as we want to show love, like, at some point, it just comes to that point where it's like, okay, I need to be selfish for a moment. You know what I mean? Give me a moment, especially somebody like you who has been in the spotlight since Bash Your Rounds, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've been in the spotlight for a long time, so it's, it's very important. Me and you talk about this. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't even think, like, 95% of the people watching this are unaware of our relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, most people don't even know me and this man, like, we have a real relationship. But that's because we always just gave each other space. Like, right. respect from afar, yo, I'll hit you. Right. You know what I mean? And that's okay. You no know doubt. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yo, there's not one picture of me and you on either one of our Instagrams. Right. You, know, you know what I'm saying? But it's love. So it's important to surround yourself. Man, look, uh, what did I get this from? I, I don't remember, but you talked earlier about, you know, pulling away from certain people or, or pulling away from what they think is best for you. Man, that's a big deal because it's easy to make the wrong decision in the wrong place, right? But on the other side of it, it's, it's hard to make the wrong decision in the right place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you surrounding yourself with people who you love and trust on a day-to-day -day basis, man, is only going to benefit you in the short term and the long term. Mm -hmm. right? and I'm, you know, I'm just ultra proud of you, bro, for... Um, you know, finally getting to that point where you make the decision that's best for Lowell. Right. You know, you deserve that, bro. Right. And just to even kind of go back and talk about it, uh, me and you first met, when we first actually sat down and talked, like, I don't know if I was in high school or what. Yeah, you were still in high school at the time. Man, we, we sat down and went talking. Wagon, I mean, Jubilee. Oh, man. man. <laughs> and I'll never forget, bro, I was like an hour and a half late. I forgot where I was coming from, bro. And... I can't even say what we was going to talk about, but he, he know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We, we sit down and yeah. talk about it all, we're just kicking it. And from that point on, man, it was always like, he a comment every now and then on the Instagram pic, but it was never like, man, he don't hit me up, kid, he don't hit me up, yeah. he ain't never hollering at me, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, when we talk, it was all love. Because right. he was the one that ran reason. You told me, he was the one that, you know, when I wanted to start my podcast, that's who I, I called and, and got everything jumped on And so it was the only right that I asked you to come on. Um, Get on. All right, cool. So now we're on this big platform now. Um, I'm gonna ask you this question: What what was what made the decision to go to Memphis? What was that? Was it? So for me, man, like a lot of people know, man, I was really happy in San Antonio, though. Like, like y'all got y'all y'all came out there, and I was sharing certain stuff about you know what was going on, but like. That's the most I actually enjoyed myself to say I was in college, you know what I'm saying? But at, at the same time, it's like, I knew what I wanted, you know what I'm right. saying? And I felt like 
the way I left off playing, I had, I owed it to myself to, you know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't walk away at that point, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, especially with, I just felt like it was the right thing to do, man. And so, for me, I had to ask myself, like, what it is that the world wants, you know? And so, not, not, not what it is that my family wants, not what it is that the coaching staff want, like, what it is that the world wants. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, after my mom died, and I knew I didn't want to be out there by myself, just to kind of go through this whole process, you know, because there's never really no set time of what it's like to when you'll be healed from losing a parent, you know, especially both of my parents at, at my age. And so it, it's never really no time the way it's going to ever get better, you know what I'm saying? Right. But all you can do is surround yourself and put yourself around the people, because, like, I have my days, man, and, like, some days I'm great, bro, and some days I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I know what's to come with that because, you know, just seeing a, a therapist and seeing, talking to a few people who, who's been through that experience. And so, for me, I just thought it was the right decision, man. Um, I get to come home, um, 15, 20 minutes from home, my family get to see me play. Um, and I just thought it was gonna be a whole lot hassle for y'all, uh, you know, my, my fan group to try to get y'all to come there to travel eight hours every other week That's to see me good. play, you know what I'm saying? That's Rather awesome. than Man, this two thirty and game started at three bet. I'm looking at you. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, another thing that I was thinking about, like, do I still want to keep chasing this power five, or do I really want to go where I'm loved? You know what I'm saying? And so, one of the quotes that I thought about, like, you know, what, what profits a man to to gain the world and lose the soul? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, I felt like when people get in these situations, it's almost like what it is like people chase the wrong thing. Yeah. Like, I'm chasing. The school name, mm -hmm. this this fame, this you know what I'm saying, yeah, what, like everything that came right. with it, and like people don't realize, like man, I never asked to be in this situation. Right. Like I never grew up like got to seventh grade and was like, man, I want to be famous, I want everybody to love me. Like yeah. that came with me being a good at something that I do. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That that came with that, and so um, just to kind of piggyback off of that, uh, it was just like. Um, a lot of people just don't don't realize like that ain't something that we ask for, you know what I'm saying? That just kind of come with the territory. And um, like I said, man, I, I, I got high expectations for myself yeah. um, going into the season. Um, I think I know a lot of people be tuning in, especially because I didn't play last year, so I'm, I'm, I'm eager to get back out there. Yeah. My, my ankle's healthy and ready to go. It's just mad I just put myself in a situation and be ready for the opportunity, man. Well, I just want to speak on that. Even a lot of people don't know that. I've been through that the whole journey. Yeah. So, and I just want to add my perspective to his situation. Like, even when, like in high school, we used to sit talk one on one, you know, like the LSU route. Right. We took that route. It just was like, you know, he been so high for so long mm -hmm. to the point now he got back to college and hit the bottom again. Mm -hmm. So now it's like LSU was just. Wasn't happening. I don't know how it feel. I'm like, man, you know, that's, that's my brother. You know, I want to win. So now I'm sitting there like, you know, what can I do? Right, right, you know, right. so, boom, go to Juco. That was, what, one of the roughest times ever, yeah. bro. Like, people, yeah. people, yeah. Like, people like, skip over that journey. Yeah, like, people don't even know. Yeah. Like, like, it was to the point, bro, call me, bro. Like, bro, I can't do this one. Uh, like, literally, at this moment, Done. Like it don't matter what to do, man. Look, I, I I'm not playing this year. Or, mm -hmm. You know, and come after that, went to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Not a crazy thing with that. I felt like he seen a side where it was high on the field, mm -hmm. and then the side it was high off the field. Right. Yeah. So sure. now for me, like I'm thinking that what three, three years from went by, you know, in college. So now I'm just like, bro. You don't want to get to go to college once. once yeah. Like, now nah, at this point, let's enjoy that off the field in life, man. Yeah. Like, like, if this happens, it happens. But I always, I always tell them, bro, like, you more than that. Yeah, not nah, for sure. A lot of people who might watch this yeah. and see him, like, oh, he's just a football player. No, you more than that, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And, and for me, to see him reach that level of happiness off the field, like, even when he wasn't playing, bro, like, my guy went played three games, you know, as high as possible. Mm -hmm. And then come back, boom, broke his hand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come from two to one ACL. Right. Story goes on. But just to see him 
like we went to the game and it happened. We like, man, you know, we devastated. Yeah. So happened. I was at that game. Yeah, that guy, yeah. When we got to the hospital, it was more of a thing like, we don't know how he gonna react. Right, you know, so right. we in our head, like, we don't even know how to really walk well, into him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, when we get there, he's smiling, bro. Yeah. You know, it was just crazy, like, you know, that took a lot of weight off. Because now, like, he's okay with us. Yeah. He understands that everything happens for a reason. Facts. And so now, after that, you know, he always cheered his teammates on, always seen the better side of the story. And to yeah. me, that just commit me in my life. I told him he always was one of my role models. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I can respect that. Facts. And so now, him, on the tail, I feel like now we can kind of balance it, balance it out. Yeah. Welcome home, man. What's that? What's yeah. that? So, man, just kind of finish it off, man. Any last words y'all want to kind of share with the audience? Uh, anything y'all want to finish it off with? Yeah, man. Uh, first and foremost, bro, thank y'all for having me on. What's up, man? What's uh, up? Go get the album, DVSD. Uh, hey, man, growth is intentional. We have to intend to grow on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? Uh, look, we, you know, we all have our issues, no matter what it may look like. Uh, we all have our things that we go through, um, but we still wake up every morning uh, with the opportunity to make a decision to grow. And if you grow intentionally every day, and, and every day you, you wake up and make the intentional decision to grow, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, uh, psychologically, then, um, and you put a plan in action in order to do that, uh, the sky ain't even the limit, man. Like, you can go beyond, beyond that. And, uh, you know, we get 1% better every day if we're on the right track. So, love and blessings, man. Mission legendary forever. And uh, that's all I got. Appreciate it, my guy. Uh, I just want to speak on, to everybody who may see us, I just want to say it's okay to be selfless, which we touched on. And, I just want to say, be mindful who you hang around, you know, and I feel like that brings a big perspective into your life, and I feel like a lot of decisions are made from teenagers on up, just because, you know, the people you have around, and I just want to say, it's okay to take yourself out of certain situations to have a better life. No doubt. I'm going to leave y'all with, dog, man, be present, man, be where your feet are. I say that to say, man, life is short, bro. And you never know when that day is, when your day is, and when the people around you day is, man. And so, like I said earlier, you never get enough time with them. And love is one thing we never give enough of, to get enough of, man. Right. So, I appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. Until we meet again, though. See and you. Go get DVSD, man. Salute, my J. What's up? Yo, welcome to the life of a dreamer, million dollar schemer Your boy got the package that should be filling up arenas Flow cleaner than your clothes, nice and crisp from the cleaners But still drop bombs, Nagasaki, Hiroshima Keep it cooler than the other side, disregard the other